everyone, so we're here in Athens, Tennessee at Moo Fest. If you're anywhere close and nearby, you ought to stop in. If not this year, next year. This is one of my best subscribers, John. Hello. He's been amazing. Look what he brought me. Oh, man after my own heart here. So, we'll be seeing you and I'll be doing a review on one of these Monte Cristo Platinums later on. It was fun. It's in located in downtown Athens. And many vendors and has many vendors, local artisans, businesses, all these wonderful booths set up. It really was a lot of nice stuff here. My favorite ones were the plants, of course. Gotta love those. There was two booths that just spoke to my heart. There was food and jewelry and just some really nice quality items. There were also games and music from local people. It was here I got to meet my, one of my best subscribers, John, and lots of dogs, dogs everywhere. Bean got to meet a couple herself, and she got rubbed on by a bunch of people that just adored her. They even had dogs for adoption, so we went and stopped by and saw the little kitties. They were beautiful and well cared for. Bean even got to get a drink from Cold Front Coffee. My daughter and her boyfriend made it. There's Keely oh, and CJ. As soon as they got there, both CJ and Keely headed over to go get it funnel cake down by the food court area where a bunch of food trucks were. It looked delicious, you guys. Tasted even better. I think they enjoyed it. Okay, so Moofest was actually kind of interesting and fun. They had some great booths. And uh, I think I'm gonna go home now, though, and smoke one of those Monte Cristos that John was so kind to bring me. Monte Cristo Platinum. Let's go home and do a review of that. All right, so we've been at the Moo Fest, had a great day, got to meet a wonderful subscriber of mine, John, who brought me four of these Monte Cristo Platinum cigars. Really, really nice, very generous of him. He also included two Filthy Hooligans and a Boveda pack. I mean, the guy went out of his way. It was really nice to meet him and uh, get to go see the happenings at MooFest. Uh, quite an eclectic group of people there, I will say. But some good food, great vendors. Bean had a great time. My daughter Keely got to come out. James and I had a nice walk through. So it was it was a good time. But let's get down to this cigar review. I'm going to talk about the Monte Cristo Platinum. The Monte Cristo was started by Alonzo Menendez. The company is now ran independently in Cuba, where he originally started it. Uh, they are run by the big company Habanos S.A. I don't know what S.A. stands for, so if anybody here does, comment below and let me know what S.A. stands for. I'm sorry because there's little gnats flying around. <laughs> this is the best place I can do my review right now. Uh, my normal porch space, uh, it's a little noisy over there. So I decided to come back amongst a couple of my plants and uh, do this review back here. So if you see me I don't have ticks, I just, uh, gnats, not ticks, just gnats. Anyway, the, so Monte Cristo is still independently ran, like I said, in Cuba, but they also are run by another company in the Dominican Republic called, again, I might screw this name up, Altadis, Altadis, something like that. Anyway, they're a very large tobacco brand. They run uh, quite a few other big names as well. So let's get into this. A little bit of tit about the Monte Cristo. It was named after the book, The Count of Monte Cristo. They really liked the story of perseverance and overcoming rags to riches type stories. And Alonzo Menendez and his partner, Garcia, they actually fled Cuba around 1960 after Castro and the communism 
regime took over. This particular cigar is rated anywhere from 80 and up. Um, it has actually been rated 94 by Cigars International. So it's a really nice cigar. It comes in three different sizes. I'm smoking the Toro, which is a six by 50. They also have a Rothschild that is a five by 50 and they have a Churchill, which is a seven by 50. They're all good. This cigar runs about $12, give or take, depending on where you buy it, if you buy it in bulk. It's a lovely cigar. Beautiful, very handsome, well rolled, just very even. Gotta throw the V in, you know how I like the V. So on the dry draw, it's a very warm flavor, I like that. It's earthy, a little hint of smokiness. I think hickory kind of comes to mind. If you like barbecue, you might really like this cigar. They say that this cigar is a really good one to have after a big hearty meal. There's another cigar called the Meat Lover Cigar. I hope to do a review on that one day because that is a phenomenally good cigar. And that has the same um, sense to me, like have it right after a really big hearty meaty meal. Right off the bat, I get, again, that smokiness, earthiness, a little touch of leather. It's really nice. The, the draw is very even, as I say, very friendly. The retro hail is pleasant on the nose. I mean, we're just getting started in this cigar, but it's, it's off to a good start. On the retro hail, already, and I kind of expected this to come in a little bit later, but already I'm getting a sense of dried fruit, like some really dark fruits, like I'm gonna say black cherry, maybe some plum, maybe even a hint of raisin. On the roof rub, in the beginning here, I'm getting that hickory, that smoked sense, that real hearty um, undertone that this brings. And I get that sense of leather again. So I'm getting that leather on the, on the draw and on the roof rub right now. So that'll be interesting to see how that develops. This is a medium to full cigar, a little more toward the full side. This is the bigger, bolder upgrade, if you wanna call it that, to like the white series. The white series is very nice, much more easy going. <laughs> All my cigars have personalities. Uh, the white series is a very user-friendly cigar. It's very nice. Um, it's not boring by any means. Uh, it's very good. But this one is definitely, it packs more of a punch. The wrapper on the Monte Cristo Platinum is a San Andreas wrapper. And if you watched, it was on the Comfortably Numb Cigar Review. I want to say it was Volume 3 has a San Andreas wrapper or binder. I'd have to go back and check again. And I think my brain said San Anders. Now, clearly that is not correct. If you know geography and location, it's not correct. You'd never say, oh, the San Andres region. Um, and as I have been learning Spanish and speaking it, I know that that's not how I would pronounce that, but my brain sometimes goes in a very weird direction, guys. And I said it, and even at the time, I remember thinking I need to change that and edit that, and I didn't. I got going on a kick and I, I just, I didn't go back and change that. So if you caught that, you may have had a good laugh at my expense. That's okay, I don't mind. I had a good laugh at my expense too. Mm. Again, the wrapper then is San Andreas. We got that right, boys and girls. The binder is Dominican and the filler is a mix of three. We have Dominican, Peruvian, and Nicaraguan. Peruvian. I need to find a cigar that is mostly Peruvian. I need to do some more research on that, I think, because you don't see that a whole lot. If you guys happen to love the Peruvian leaf and you have any comments, again, comment down below. Like and subscribe this, to this channel. Um, and you guys, on a side note, as of right now, I'm almost to 3,000 subscribers. I can't believe it. I really am in shock. I just never really thought of myself as being that interesting to where anybody would care to hear what I have to say. But here we are. Three, almost 3,000 strong, and it's all thanks to you guys. I'm now in the middle of this cigar, and it's kind of had some interesting developments. My first 
thought about this is that on the draw, it's almost non-existent. And that sounds really weird, you guys. I, I realize this. But the draw is almost neutral. But on the retro hail, all of those dry, dark fruits really come in. I mean, you just, you have this plethora of dark fruits. Like I said before, the plum, the black cherry. I'm even gonna say maybe a hint of uh, blackberry. It's kind of interesting. On the roof rub, I now get a creaminess. There's a, a definite hint of some, some cream, like I would say heavy cream in there. That, that uh, roof rub, really nice. If I had to put anything, any real flavor on the draw, I'm gonna go back to that kind of hickory smoked, you know, it's that to me is more of a neutral flavor. It's definitely there. Originally, I, I felt like it was more of an undertone. Now on the draw, that's, that's where I see it. But it's still very, very minimal. But man, that retrohale, mm, punch of fruit and then the roof rub with that cream. I've already been smoking this cigar almost 40 minutes. So this cigar has some staying power. That to me is a really big attribute to any cigar if it really just takes its time burning. I don't like the ones that when you light it, it just, it just seems to burn really fast. There's some good cigars out there, but they burn fast. So for me, my, my rating kind of goes down on them. This is not one of them. It's been a while since I've had one of these Platinums and I kind of honestly forgot how good it was. Aside from that, I've tapped the ash a time or two, but you can see it's nice and equal. It's burning beautifully. It's bound nice and tight. However, the draw itself is not tight. The draw is very good. It's um, very even. It's got a pleasant draw to it. I don't find myself fighting. And, you know, I do naturally turn the cigar as I smoke it anyway, but I'm not having to press down. So one of the little hints and tips about cigars, I may have mentioned it before, is if you have one that when you draw, you feel like you're just, you know, your cheeks are getting tired because you're drawing so hard off of it. One of the things that you can do to help it get relit or to help soften up the leaves is roll the cigar and as you're taking draws, you're going to lightly press down on it. It's like you're massaging the leaf in a circular pattern. You can see the smoke really billows up when you do that because it creates pockets within the leaves that allow the smoke to travel. So it's a really a good way if you catch it soon enough as it seems to be dying down, a lot of times you can relight it without having to use a layer or you can soften up the leaf inside to where the draw softens. Does not matter if you go counterclockwise or clockwise, whatever floats your boat that day. Now, in some really extreme cases, I've had some cigars that were very, very tight, super tightly bound. Um, honestly, I've had more Cuban cigars that did that than anything. And I will take the butt, the, you know, the tip of a knife or uh, even a toothpick, and I'll just put it down in there, and I'll just kind of softly wiggle it. I don't want to, I don't want to disturb the, the wrapper or even really the binder. I don't want to put cracks in it, but I just want to start loosening it up. That usually helps, and then you can smoke away. And for another great subscriber of mine, very loyal guy, Robert. I'm gonna do the cigar toss, so stay tuned for that too. So now I'm at the end, toward the end. I could technically have probably another 20, maybe even 30 minutes of smoke time here. My thoughts toward the end is that on the draw, you start getting some pepper notes, some black pepper. I am not generally a fan of black pepper. It's not overpowering, it's not bad, it just makes it a little bitter for me. The retrohale is still okay in the nose. It's not uh, burning my nose. It's, interestingly enough, the roof rub, I'm now getting more of that smoked, kind of hickory, barbecue kind of kind of smoke and taste. So the roof rub for me is not as nice as it had been when it was creamy. The retro hail still has some remnants of those dark and dried fruits. So the retro hail is its biggest glowing point at this point. Even being toward the end, usually as some cigars get down toward the end, the retro hail will start getting 
you know, kind of burning in your nose, and I don't like that. Uh, this one is not doing that. So for the flavors coming through, it's surprising me that it is not burning my nose. If you like something medium to more full body, and I'm very close to saying this is more full body than medium, this is a good cigar to try. Monte Cristo has been around a long time and they've got several lines that they do. They're all good. They're well constructed. They're, they're beautifully done. They know how to build a, a good cigar, how to grow a good leaf. And this Platinum is no exception. It's, it's nice. I will probably go ahead and throw this out so I can do a more visible cigar toss for Robert. Uh, but I feel like I'm wasting it if I don't get a couple more good puffs out of it. Other than a slight little notch, as you can see, it's been burning very evenly. It's been good. It's, it's got a nice smoke that comes out of it. Nice and hearty. It's not wispy. It's not so full that it's, you know, blinding you as you're, as you're blowing out. But it, it's been good like that. I can't say too much bad about this. There's nothing bad to say about this cigar at all. As you can see, I've already taken the lower band off, and now I will take the, north, the, the regular home brand off, as I call it. There it is. Beautiful. I tend to collect these bands, and I glue them. It was my tool cart, uh, but now it's become the detail cart because James and I have bought a really nice uh, big toolbox. Got it from Harbor Freight. We got the locker, the main size, I think it's 52 inch, double stack, and then the side extra drawers. I don't know what they call it with a little table on it. So we have now taken my toolbox and made it into our detail cart. And then his toolbox, I think we'll be using it for our future powder coating business. All right, so here comes the cigar toss. And again, I know it's a little premature because I still have a couple minutes worth of smoking on this. I'm gonna go ahead and toss it. I'm gonna go ahead and crack open another one, have a second cigar, so let's do this. On that note, I'm going to say stay adventurous. Take a breath. Don't take any shit. Thanks for being here, guys. See you next time.